Hello and welcome to the I, your English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The Union Home Ministry is monitoring the flood situation in Assam, in which two children have lost their lives, according to an official bulletin, and over 3.63 lakh people have been affected so far in 950 villages in over 21 districts of the state. The 40-storey Twin Tower project constructed in Uttar Pradesh's Noida by real estate firm Supertech will be demolished over the violation of construction bylaws, said Supreme Court on Tuesday. In some good news for Nagaland, the state has been evaluated as the best in quality of surveillance of data reporting for COVID-19 in the country by Stanford University. Now for the news in details. In some good news for Nagaland, the state has been evaluated as the best in quality of surveillance of data reporting for COVID-19 in the country. According to a study done by PhD students from Stanford University led by Professor James Zhu, reporting quality of COVID-19 surveillance data have been evaluated from various states in India since May 2020. It was informed that reporting quality refers to the presence of or absence of a data item in the surveillance data pu published by the state government. Age distribution for deaths is an example of such a data item. The findings from 2020 were published in BMC Public Health and the Journal of the Indian Institute of Science. In a letter of appreciation from the researchers to the War Room Nagaland, it was informed that their most recent paper, which is currently under review, evaluates and quantifies the reporting quality of surveillance, vaccination and vacant bed availability data across 100 plus websites and apps from national and subnational governments in India during May June 2021 and that the paper heavily focuses on granular or disaggregated data. The findings showed that the quality of surveillance data reporting from Nagaland is the best in the country with the states highest in their metric because of high quality granular data reporting through weekly bulletins. Appreciating the efforts of the Nagaland government in making these bulletins available, the researchers from Stanford stated that the state government is empowering people to be proactive about their health and encourage them to continue publishing such high-quality bulletins. Union Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju on Tuesday wished and congratulated all the nine newly appointed Supreme Court judges, terming it as a historic moment for gender representation as three women were among those who were sworn in as judges of the Apex Court today. Rijiju posted on Twitter congratulating the nine newly appointed Supreme Court judges and earlier today the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, administered the oath of office to the nine Supreme Court judges. This is for the first time in the history of the Supreme Court of India when nine judges have taken the oath of office in one go and with this the, the total strength of judges in the apex court has gone up to 33. Traditionally, the oath to the new judges is, is administered in court number one which is presided over by the Chief Justice of India. It may be recalled that the Supreme Court Collegium on August 17, 2021, had recommended nine names for elevation to the bench of Supreme Court. Accepting the recommendation made by the Supreme Court Collegium, the President of India appointed the nine judges to the court on August 26 this year. The 40-storey Twin Tower project constructed in Uttar Pradesh's Noida by real estate firm Supertech will be demolished over the violation of construction bylaws, said Supreme Court on Tuesday. The Supreme Court was pronouncing its judgment in the case involving Supertech Emerald Court Owners Resident Welfare Association, RWA, against the real estate company Supertech Limited. The court verdict said that the construction of the Twin Towers, containing around 1,000 flats, was done in violation of the rules and must be raised within a period of two months by Supertech at its own cost. There is the collusion of Noida Authority and the real estate company Supertech while allowing construction of two additional towers in one of its Noida projects, said the court. The order also said the real estate firm Supertech has to reimburse the booking company to all the flat owners within two months with 12% interest. The Apex Court also upheld the Allahabad Court April 11, 2014 verdict 
ordering demolition of two 40-story twin towers, Apex and Cien, in Uttar Pradesh's Noida. The Chief Minister of Nagaland, Nifu Rio, inaugurated a Langto Tea Industry Sangsa Tizit in Mon on August 31st. He was accompanied by Minister of Agriculture and Corporation, G. Kaito Ai, Minister of Transport, Civil Aviation, Railway and Land Resources, Paiwang Konyak, and MLA CL John and Yolo Konyak. In his inaugural speech, Rio appreciated the Langto industry owners for opening such a big industry privately for the upliftment of the tea growers. He stated that tea originated in China and is now cultivated in most of the Asian and African countries. He advised the people of Tizit to increase their farming and produce tea of high quality. Rio further said that Tizit has a fav favorable climate and has sufficient land and other resources. He added that the industry will up uplift not only the people of Tizit, but the entire Mon district. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday called Assam Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma to inquire about the flood situation in the state and assured all possible assistance. Adarnia Bratan Mantri Narendra Modi telephoned today to inquire about flood situation and assured all help to Assam to combat these minis. Current flood has gravely impacted the livelihoods of many people, Sarma tweeted his gratitude to Atarnia Modiji for standing with them at this hour of crisis. As many as 950 villages in 21 districts of Assam have been affected due to floods, revealed Food Reporting and Information Management System. As per the report of FREMS released by Assam State Disaster Management Authority on August 30, as many as 950 villages in 21 districts of Assam that inhabit 3,63,135 people have been affected due to the floods in the state. According to the report, a total of 1,619 people have taken shelter in these relief camps. The Union Home Ministry is monitoring the flood situation in Assam, in which two children have lost their lives, according to an official bulletin, and over 3.63 lakh people have been affected so far in 950 villages in over 21 districts of the state. The Ministry of Home Affairs has been keeping a watch on the Assam flood situation and 10 National Disaster Response Force teams have been deployed in the state by Sunday, an official said. Earlier today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi telephoned Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma to inquire about the flood situation in the state and assured all possible assistance. According to information put out by Flood Reporting and Information Management System, two children, one each in Chenga in Barbeta district and Mayong in Moregaon, had drowned in the floodwaters till Monday, August 30th. As per the reports of FR, IMS released by Assam State Disaster Management Authority, as many as 950 villages have been flooded and 30,333.36 hectares of crop have been damaged in the state. A total of 1,619 people have been evacuated to relief camps from various parts of the state. Farmers Panchayat in Haryana issued an ultimatum to the state government on Monday to act against Karnal SDM Ayush Singh Within seven days, even as Chief Minister Mano Manohar Lal Qatar put up another stout defence of the office's strict actions. Farmers Panchayat in Haryana issued an ultimatum to the state government on Monday to act against Colonel SDM Ayush Singh. Within seven days, even as CM Manohar Lal Qatar put up another stout defence of the officer's strict actions, saying the only thing that could be questioned about his conduct during Saturday's farm protests was his inappropriate choice of words. Protection of democracy is the work of the administration. They are assigned to do this job. We have heard and seen the audio and video DGP is propping the incident and the local administration too is doing the same. We shall act as and when the report comes to us, Qatar told reporters in Chandigarh. At least 10 people were injured when police caned a group of farmers disrupting traffic on a highway in Haryana while proceeding to Karnal, where Qatar state BJP president Om Prakash Tankar and other party functionaries were attending an event. The farmers' panchayat chaired by BKU Charuni, National President Gurnam Singh Charuni at a Karounda Green Market in Karnal demanded that Singh be suspended along with some other officials, including Inspector Harjinder Singh, for allegedly targeting the protesters without provocation. The Samyukt Kisan Morcha made a similar demand. We want FIRs to be registered against them. 
We also demand rupees 25 lakh in compensation and a government job for the king of farmer Sushil Kachal, who died of injuries suffered in the Lati charge, and rupees 2 lakh to each injured farmer, Charuni said. Farmers will indefinitely carry out the Colonel Secretariat on September 7 if the government fails to act on the Panchayat's demand by September 6, he warned. While urging farmers to continue the protests against BJB, JJB leaders, in a statement later, SKM said, It is utterly shocking that the CM is choosing to brush aside the barbaric and illegal instructions as only a wrong choice of words. It once again clearly reiterates that we have been saying that the Qatar government is at war with its own people. The government has reportedly returned the Supreme Court Collegium names of 14 advocates it had recommended for ele elevation as High Court judges. Sources in the government said all the names were returned with a request to reconsider within a span of one week, sometime in end of July and early August. But the recommendations by the Apex Court Collegium were made nearly a year ago. In some cases, the recommendations were made over a year ago. The names for elevation were made for the High Courts of Delhi, Kalkutta, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka and Kerala, the sources said without elaborating. In written reply to a question in Rajya Sabha during the monsoon session of Parliament, Law Minister Giran Rijiju said that between July 1, 2020 and July 15, 2021, the Supreme Court Collegium made 80 recommendations for appointment of judges in various high courts. Out of these, 45 recommendees were appointed by the government as high court judges, and the remaining proposals are under various stages of processing with the government and the SC Collegium. India has 25 high courts with a sanctioned strength of 1,098 judges. The working strength as on August 1 stands at 643, a shortfall of 455 judges. The United States forces left Afghanistan on Tuesday, marking the end of a chaotic and messy exit from America's longest war. The last U.S. military planes flew out of Afghanistan, according to New York Times. Five American C-17 cargo jets flew out of Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul on Tuesday morning. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken terms it a beginning of a new chapter of American engagement with Afghanistan. It's one in which the U.S. will lead with diplomacy and the military mission is over, he tweeted. Blinken has announced that the U.S. has suspended diplomatic presence in Kabul and transferred operations to Doha, Qatar. For the time being, the U.S. will use this post in Doha to manage its diplomacy with Afghanistan, he said. He assured that the United States will continue to support humanitarian aid to the Afghan people. The Union Finance Ministry on Tuesday said it has released an amount of 13,385.70 crore for providing grants to the ru rural local bodies. The amount has been given to 25 states for the purpose, the ministry said in a release. This is the first installment of the tight grants for the year 2021 to 2022 and have been released as per the recommendations of the 15th Finance Commission, the ministry said. Total grant amounting to Rs 25,129.98 crore released to rural local bodies so far in 2021 to 2022. The highest amount has been given to Uttar Pradesh. 2,162.4 crore, followed by Maharashtra, 1,292.1 crore, Bihar, 1,112.7 crore, and Madhya Pradesh, 883.2 crore. Explaining the purpose of diet grants, the ministry further said that these are released for improving two critical services, sanitation and maintenance of open defecation fee status and supply of drinking water, rainwater, harvesting and water recycling. These tied grants are meant to ensure availability of additional funds to the rural local bodies over and above the funds allocated by the centre and respective state government. The finance ministry said that the amount of tied grants should be released by a state government within 10 working days of receiving it from the centre, failing which they will have to pay interest. Out of the total grant in aid allocated for Panjayati Raj institutions, 60% is tied grant, the ministry said. The remaining amount can be utilized at the discretion of the Panjayati Raj institution for location-specific felt needs, it added. However, the ministry mentioned that the remaining 40% of the amount should not be used for payment of salaries. That's all for news from the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.